Greetings, this is Ebby Nice from Ebby's Lounge, your birth doula, sister circle facilitator, and life coach. I'm here today at the African American Museum in Hempstead, so I'm so excited about it. I just met this amazing, wonderful woman um, who is sharing so much knowledge. Her name is Joyce Setta, um, and she works here at the... I'm the director at the African American she Museum. She is the director uh, um, here at the African American Museum in Hempstead, and I have a question for her. Miss Rosetta, what do you want us to know about African history? And here, here she is, right here. Look at her, right here. <laughs> well, I would love, first of all, for you to know that the history you have been taught is not your history. That black history doesn't even exist. We are history, period. And for instance, the curriculum is no longer, uh, uh, history is no longer part of the curriculum here in New York State. And if you're going to teach your children anything, you need to come to a museum that has hidden history such as this, or they will never know because they are ingrained from the beginning to be inferior. It is pressed into their minds that you're not white, you're not as good as us. The things that we are that are open for us to do and to have, you're, you can't get that. There is this words out there about freedom and, and, and diversity and all of that, but when you are taught from a child that you are the descendant of slaves, not that that's a bad thing, because most people in their history, they, they have been a slave at one time or another, but ours is constantly placed in front of us. We never see uh, the Chinese slaves, who had, people who had slave ancestry, they don't talk about their slave ancestry or any other race. It's only our history is always connected to slavery, and they have taught us to celebrate that. Celebrate that fact. The thing is, if you are descended from a slave, you need to be proud of those two people in every generation that survived stuff that you could never tolerate or stand. You would kill yourself in some instances if you knew what they went through. And be proud of them. Be, always honor them, but also know that there were black people living in this country, even when slavery was going on, who were free and making money and living normally. In 1818, our president, James Monroe, made an announcement. If you have come to this country from Africa of your own free will and you want to go back, I'll pay your way. Now, we know what his intentions were, but thank God, I mean, some people wanted to go back home. Maybe they couldn't afford it, so they took advantage of that. 12,000 people took advantage of it. Wow. 12,000 people. So you, imagine how many did not take, on, take them on. So we have to understand that we were here, we got to dig out that history, we got to find ourselves and build upon that. Because when children feel depressed when they find out that they are descendants of a slave, and they look at a white person and think, well, he's been free all his life. No, he has not. His ancestors probably suffered some form of slavery also. But it is not taught to them, and it's not told them that you have nothing else, you know, and, and you're always less than. And the only way, we have to build the self-esteem in our children on our own because we will not get help from the outside. We have got to build that history, have to understand it and live like we are proud of who we are. We got to achieve things. Why is it that kids say, I hate math? I got an exhibit in here that tells us that we invented math. Is it, is it, it in there? Break. Can yes, we see, it is. Can, can we, Come on can we see that video real quick? <laughs> Don't Come on, let's see that video. <laughs> I just met this amazing woman. I'm so happy that I got a chance to meet her. So um, I met a woman in Pound event, just got a chance to meet her. So um, we're gonna quickly see that video before, I mean that um, that artwork before we I head over to the empowerment event. So let's see it. Oh, I got black, uh, uh, the, the back uh, backstage pass. <laughs> oh, here it is. Okay, here it is. This is the Labombo bone. This is the Labombo bone. Hunter-gatherers would get an animal, cut the bone to this size, dry them out, and carve prime numbers along these bones. You can look see the numbers a little better on this shot. But these are prime numbers. How they calculated, they would slide the bones back and forth in order to calculate. Mm -hmm. Now the Chinese come along, they see this, and they say, hmm, it, must be, it would be a lot easier if we had a bar and some beads to slide back and forth. That's how the abacus was created. This Labombo bone is 37,000 years old. Hunter-gatherers did this. Now, when you see in the movies a hunter-gatherer, he's a guy in a loincloth and carrying a spear and running through something that looks like a jungle, you know? That's how they portray the, 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 the hunter-gatherers. But they were doing prime numbers. And it's so crazy. <laughs> uh-huh. 
that this is the Ashango bone. The Ashango bone, they believe a woman created math because of the Ashango bone. It's not as old as the, the, the bombo, but there may be another one out there that's even older. But it has to do with the counting of days. It had to come before the prime numbers because it's basic math. So they cut together, the men are usually sleeping at night. But the women, they're up all night nursing the baby. Who's there to look at? The moon. So you watch the moon. Some woman, somewhere, figured out that just before my cycle begins, the moon is in this position. So now I can predict when it's going to happen. So it's very important to me. So I'm going to keep track of all of that. The word in Latin for the moon is mens, M-E-N-S. Where does menstruation come from? Same word. Wow. <laughs> Don't you love it? Thank you so much, Rosetta. Oh my God. Thank you, thank you. Very grateful. And you know what? They said that we didn't, we did not 